Well, I'm going to show you something that's kind of unusual. Now, pet computers themselves are a bit unusual, but even for folks who have pets, to see VisiCalc, the original VisiCalc, run on a Commodore PET is something that is not seen very often. And uh, there's a reason for it, which I will show you in a little bit. Um, but I'm going to first uh, kind of walk you through running VisiCalc and getting it started and uh, take you on a little journey here. So we have a Commodore 8032 computer. Uh, it's 80 column with 32 K, K bytes, kilobytes of memory. And uh, one of the companion disk drives that Commodore made back in the day, made a beautiful set together. Uh, it's an 8050. So it's dual drives and these drives are quad density. They uh, write on 96 tracks per inch, which is a format that didn't last very long before IBM came out with the high density disks. Uh, so they were, they were the cool thing to have because uh, it put five, uh, something like 500K bytes of, of storage on one side of a floppy. These were single-sided. Uh, there was another model, uh, the 8052, that was double-sided. And um, that was, I guess, the very best uh, best drive that they, that they made for this series. Um, so let's turn it on. There's an interesting little light show when you turn these on. And um, so you get a red light at first. Green lights come on, a little blinking, and then a green light when everything's good. Uh, might be interesting to some. I, I pulled this out of storage. Probably hadn't seen the light of day for 30 years. And uh, this light stayed red when I did. And I was thought, oh, boy, I've got a messed up drive. And uh, I reseeded the chips inside, and it all started working uh, after that. So, yay. Um, so let's turn on the computer. Here we go. I'm going to reach back to its corner. And... Hit its power ah, and the beautiful chirp. Uh, the drive resets. It did a little blinking action again and came back to green, which is all good. We have Commodore Basic 4 on a pet with uh, just under 32K of bytes of free memory showing, which is great. It's all correct. Um, now let's, let's take a look at the disk drive. We're going to push this in, and this is how these work. They're, they're really kind of cool mechanically. You push them in, and unlike uh, the IBM-style floppy drives, they actually seat the disk right there with a click, and then you close the door. All right, so in case I forget at the end of this, I'm going to show you how they come out, too. You push the door down, and it pops up, and then you pull it up a little more, and it actually kicks the disk out to you, which is really rather cool. All right, so we'll mount this in, and uh, we'll do a little dance here. Um, I'll show you the computers like running right, and um, well, basically the pet. Uh, for those who are more familiar with the um, the, the Commodore sixty four, which was very popular, of course, and a lot of people know it, um, the Commodore pet has basic running when or ready to go when when it boots up so you're in basic and you can write uh you write your programs we will do a quick hello world here hello world all right looks good mistakes there. So it's the full screen editor, just like on the Commodore 64. So if I like type type a line wrong here, I meant to say go to 10 and I did it wrong. The full screen editor lets you move up, move, move over and just type over what you did wrong and hit enter and that re reestablishes the, the, the line. So it's correct now. And uh, so there you go. There's a Hello World basic program. We all love to test our computers with at first. 
All right, so the disk commands, uh, some of them are the same on a 64 and some are different on a pet. I'll do a directory to show you what's on this disk. All right, so I'm gonna hit enter and it will quickly hit, hit the disk. And I'm not sure if we could see it. There we go, light, light lights. And now we have the directory coming up here. And I'll do it again so you can watch how it scrolls up the screen. All right. Help if I type it right. Directory. There we go. And there we go. So on the VisiCalc disk, uh, it has to have these all these files on it. Uh, this is the starter program. Got it. Got to load this first, and then run it, and then then decides what to run next, the 40 or 80 column version of VisiCalc. And it works pretty good. So um, the load command I'll use, there, there's other load commands uh, specific to this drive, but uh, the ones for the 64 work too. So I'm gonna tell it to load the very first program on the disk, which you can say star for, you don't have to explicitly type in the name of the first one. Star means the first one. And eight means this disk drive here, here. So there we go. Uh, that's it. It's loading, and it loaded. It says it's ready, and this is what it, that loader program looks like. So this is what's uh, what's in here, and uh, it's it's a program that's loaded with machine code that doesn't come out when you do a list, uh, but you get this the one line of basic that's in here, which says jump into the machine code at this address. Anybody who has 64s have seen that all the time. All right, so when I run this, well, before I run it, I'm gonna clear the screen because it does something weird that it'll be easier to see if I clear the screen, do a shift clear, clears the screen. I'm gonna move the cursor down a little bit, enter the run command. So now when it runs, you're going to see up in the left corner, it'll put VC for VisiCalc, meaning that, okay, VisiCalc is now running. Here we go. Boom. There it goes. Now it's hitting the disk and loading the second program. And in a moment, VisiCalc will appear on the screen. And it will be really cool. Just a minute, a little more, second. Now. And there it is, folks. Copyright 1980 Software Arts Incorporated 1.75A VisiCalc. Is that cool or what? So, um, the, uh, the original Apple version only had the, the keyboard on the Apple II only had right and left arrow keys. You had to hit the space bar, the toggle, and an indicator right here in the corner would tell you whether you were in horizontal or vertical mode of the keys. It's blank in the Commodore version. And it's blank because Commodore has explicit up and down and left and right keys. Like the TRS-80, which had up and down and left and right keys on the keyboard. In fact, they had four keys, um, a key for each direction. And uh, like the Commodore 64, you hold the shift key down to go up and the shift key can on this key to go left. So let's put in a quick uh, spreadsheet. I'll go down and over a little bit, kind of center up. And we'll put uh, some numbers in. One, down two down, three down, all right? And I'll put in some dashes and um, to make a line and I'll you know, be adding for this. So I'm gonna hit a shift, I'm gonna hit a quote to let it know that I'm doing a label and I will put in a line of dashes, hit enter, go down and now I'll do a formula which begins in VisiCalc with an at so here comes the at, and VisiCalc says, oh, okay, you're doing a value. 
because you didn't that. So I'll type uh, sum, which is the formula name for uh, the function to sum. And I'll do a open parenthesis. And this is pretty cool because VisiCalc created this uh, precedent that when you um, open a parenthesis and then use your arrow keys, you're going to be specifying first the start of where you want to do the function from. You hit a dot, say that's where I'm going from. And now I want to enter the two. So we get the dots and we can then move the cursor back to a spot where we want it to be the end point. And believe it or not, you don't have to close with a parenthesis for the sum of the range. You can just hit enter. So I'll hit enter. And there we have a range. And now what we get to do is play what if. So if this was uh, dollars that we uh, earned uh, from uh, selling our software and we only had six dollars, we could say, well, what if we made fifty dollars here? Oh, 54, much better than six. So there we go. That's the essence of the spreadsheet. And it really works. And it's from 1980 running on a on a pet, uh, frankly, I don't know the year that the 8032 came out, but it might have been, uh, it was probably 79, 78 or 79. So it's uh, it's the VisiCalc that was period for this machine. And uh, the Commodore PET was part of uh, the original personal computer, Holy Trinity. So we call them from the air, which was the Apple II, the PET, and the um, TRS-80 Model 1 computer system. Uh, I guess uh, by rights, it was uh, the original pet with the chiclet keyboard that might have been really the, the, um, the original member of the Holy Trinity, but this is pretty close. So one of the reasons why, I'll close with this, uh, that this is not seen very often on a pet is because you not only need to get software on a disc, to run this, it needs one other thing. It needs something under the hood. And uh, one of the things we love about pets is that under the hood, the, the computer actually has a hood. So it's hinged in the back and you lift up the front to work on the insides. And inside, you'll see that I have added a chip to the board. It's up on a converter. It's a modern chip that has been uh, wired to mate with the socket of an older style chip. And that chip is a electrically erasable, programmable, read-only memory that uh, contains the copy protection ROM code that VisiCalc expects to be in place when VisiCalc runs, and it won't run without it. So, um, you know, you got to be able to handle ROMs and prepare a ROM to go in your machine to do this. And uh, that's it. Pretty exciting to see VisiCalc running on a Commodore PET. And that is how it was in 1980. Thanks for watching.